it succeeded it. I, I didn't realize that we could cut the volume of lumber that we cut compared to what I thought we would cut. short put wood shipping it to paper mills in 1986 and just uh, started uh, that away and then started buying tracks of timber and uh, we started getting contract loggers to merchandise that timber and uh, we're selling the paper mills, pine saw mills, pine chipping saw mills, hardwood saw mills, pallet mills and just just started that away and uh, Thought about if we built a mill, we might could take our products that we were buying and give us a, a little further merchandise. And, uh, well, uh, they had a sales rep, Bob Rose, that would call on us in the early days, and uh, we got ready to build a uh, a new mill in '96. And uh, we looked around different manufacturers, and it was a, it just looked like a simple, reliable, efficient carriage. And uh, we saw them at the different trade shows. Wood miser in there, and we wanted to take it out and uh, put that lumber pro in, but we didn't want a 54 inch. Uh, we got two seven foot band mills, head rigs, and we we got a 62 inch horizontal resaw, and and we thought if we could get a 62, we could uh, we could feed it faster, cut more production, just get more more utilization out of it. Uh, you might say, and then we thought we could take our saws off that double cut and put on our horizontal just to give us a little more return on our investment. Right, Chico, he's, he's, he's a class act. He's, he helped us out with designing, with very good, useful information. And it's just been out of his way, you know, helpful. You know, it, it was really good. And then he had his uh, two guys, Adam and, and Perry, or three guys, Adam, Perry, and uh, they come down with uh, the rod. I mean, they just, they got here and they did their work and everything. And I'm telling you, it was, it was, it was, it was top notch. Say, uh, 
are you are you getting more lines per day with this? And production wise, how do you think they compare? I believe we get a few more saw lines with this than what we are with that conventional 788 McDonald over there. And if if you was running the same, I believe it'd be pretty close to uh, the same amount of production. But with that mill over there, you know, he's just got he got one bigger resaw that he's feeding. Which over here for this lumber pro, we have a smaller resaw and another circle head rig that's also feeding that same resaw. So I mean, if you can put it neck to neck, I believe it'd be it'd be pretty close. To it. And at the same time, running probably what a third as much horsepower required. Yes, sir. And overall footprint. I'd say it's probably half, wouldn't you say? About half the uh, yes space sir. required? See, yes, sir. See, with this system here, we can cut up to a 30 foot load. Right. So with a normal, like say, if you're only, only going to cut 18s or 20s, you know, you take 10 feet of this, this, this rotor bed off. I mean, you can almost put two of them in the same yes, spot. You can put one of those. Yes, sir. So, I mean, we're capable of, you know, we probably will never cut up, you know, a 30 foot load, but we've got the potential there. To do it. If we wanted to, we could. You know, it's designed to do but, uh, yeah, you don't have near about the, you know, the space. Yeah, that's space put more lumber. Put more lumber. Put more lumber, exactly. I tell you, this is a, it's a log-eating machine. The insulation went great. You know, we come in on about three truck loads and, we had all the structural work done up over our log deck and up under the, uh, the carriage and stuff. And their blueprints and, and their setup, everything went down and it went like a truck. I never, I never in my life would imagine it, but it went so, so easy. It's probably about the best piece of equipment. Rod provided us a blueprint and uh, we put steel down in the concrete and poured a heavy concrete foundation under it. and. Uh, and when that blueprints, when that piece of equipment came here, we had the mountain pad set for it. it. It all fit right into place. It's a small footprint, and it's the hydraulic units are contained on it. Sawdust systems contained on it. The uh, all you need to do is run the power to it. So it was, it it, it just saved tremendous time and and cost of hiring outside contractors to do that work. Whereas we. We did it in house with uh, with a couple of wells.
Mr. Like you said, Mr. Lee Stockton, he's known as the best ball filer in the South. He's a great man. He's a great filer. I would say it probably took him, I'd say about two weeks to get all this, you know, all this ducks in a row and, and figuring out and trying different things and as far as getting it. Uh, when we started this uh, meal, the sauce, we didn't have any problems with the sauce. The sauce made it. Lee had the sauce mixed up well, and also Clearman had the uh, nail and stuff aligned properly to where we started sawing, we wouldn't make it. Uh, the filing of it, uh, the guy that's filing it for it had never filed for a double cut, and we went to one mill and looked at the way they were filing, and he came back and I think he read some books about it and talked to some people, and uh, we uh we really hadn't hit Mr. Beat. It's 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 been good. Turn that to me that the production is is real close out of that out of that lumber pro in comparison to the uh, conventional mill, and the the saws would be cheaper and it's less horsepower to run it, so you got less electricity cost. Uh, I I definitely think you're you you're you're right there if if not just right equal with the with the band. Would you make the same investment again? Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, absolutely. I'm just, I thought about putting that circle head rig in there and I could put that in and been running a lot quicker, but I think over long haul and longevity with the cost of logs, the cost of production, that we're going to be way ahead.